it's Iris here again, and my new dragon friend, Speed Slash. Hello! And today, we are going to read an, another amazing book about a hero dog. His name is Togo. And this is a truly amazing storybook. But it actually is a non-fiction storybook. This actually happened. So, let's get reading. Togo by Robert J. Blake. Here's a little map of the 1925 Serum Run. Anchorage to Ninana to Nome. Togo. Oh, this picture is so cute. Togo when he was a new puppy. Leonard Cipolla shook his head. He carefully watched every new pup, hoping to see that special one, a pup that would grow into the perfect dog to lead his sled racing team. But it was unlikely to be this pup, the one he called Togo. He was too small, too independent, and too wild for his team. Wee! Running around in the snow! Wee! <laughs> so one day, when a woman came to his kennel looking for a pet, Sapala said, I've got just the dog for you. And he gave her Togo. But Togo didn't want to be a pet. He wanted to be a sled dog. He crashed through the woman's parlor window and ran all the way home with the team. <laughs> to be with the team is the best thing that a sled dog could have. Friendship is amazing. Any dog that wants to be here that badly can stay, was what Sapala said. When Sapala's team was racing, he and the dogs hauled freight all over Alaska. One stormy day, when Togo was only eight months old, just a wee little new puppy. Sapala planned to leave him behind while he took the team on an overnight supply run to a place called Dime Creek. Keep that pup behind the fence. Sapala called to the kennel helper as he and his team pulled away. Aww. But the fence did not stop Togo. Late that night, he found a way to escape and chased after the team. Best friends forever. It was snowing hard the next morning on the trail. So Sapala harnessed the team and took off before dawn. By daylight, the dogs had lost their way. Suddenly, all ears went up. Oh! The team bolted forward as, as if the dogs had caught a scent. Reindeer? Sapala wondered. A fox? A dog stepped into view. Togo! Sapala sighed. You look like you ran all night. The next day, Togo was allowed to run free around the team in circles and circles and circles. He nipped and barked at the team. Sapala knew his dogs would never find the trail with Togo distracting them. He put the dog in a harness at the back of the team just to keep him under control. That will slow you down, Sapala said, but it didn't. <laughs> Togo easily kept the pace. Surprised, Sapala moved Togo up to a position in the center of the line. When they took off, Togo pulled harder than any other dog. All right then, Sapala said, and moved Togo to the lead position. Let's see if you can get us back on track. Togo easily found the trail. Three cheers for Togo! Yay, Togo! Yay, Togo! Yay, Togo! Woohoo! Although small for a Siberian husky, Togo was very strong. He had a perfect sense of direction and always tried to travel in a straight line. Whee! 
right from the start, he got the team where they needed to go. Though he often plowed them through a snowbank to get there. <laughs> In 1918, Sapala entered Telco in his first race, the Borden Marathon. The next year, they set the record for the fastest time ever in that event! Woohoo! Togo is so fast! Race after race, it was always the same. Togo's team, the winners. Sapala became known as the fast fastest man in North America. It's because of that dog, Togo. Everybody said. Then, one icy January day, there came a desperate knock on Sapala's door. Knock, 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 knock. Diphtheria, the man's voice cut through the freezing wind. A young boy, it is so contagious that in two weeks it could wipe out everyone here in Nome. He tried to catch his breath. Anchorage has an antitoxin that can stop it. But the train from Anchorage only goes as far as Minana. Minana was 600 miles from Nome. A dog team has volunteered to bring the serum from Minana to Nilato. I mean Nulato. Still 300 miles away from Nome, you have the fastest team in Alaska. Would you make the run to Nulato and bring back the serum? When do you need it? Sipala asked. Yesterday, said the man. January 20th, 1925. Newspaper headlines around the world shouted out the story. Gnome's deadly race against time and the elements. It usually took the U.S. mail system 30 days days to make the run from Ninana to Nome, but now, in the middle of winter, the mushers didn't have 30 days. Nome had no more than two weeks before diphtheria devastated the city. Ah! Panic attack! Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna panic this time. Toko's eyes followed Sapala as he carefully chose the dogs for this run, only the fat fastest fastest, not fattest, sorry, only the fastest, most trail-smart and obedient dogs would do. At last, the team was set, with Togo in the lead. Sapala called out to him with his familiar clucking sound, and the team left Nome. The team soon settled down behind Togo, the only sounds were the slush of the sled and the breathing of the dogs. <laughs> With just six hours of daylight this time of year, Sapala set a quick place and made the 30 miles into Solomon at the, as the sun set. January 29th, 1925. On the second day, a strong wind came up, drifting snow all over the trail. Ooh, all covered. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry about. <laughs> okay, Togo, with his good trail sense, carefully avoided stumps and holes and anything hidden under the snow. The going was slow. Sapala decided to take a shortcut across frozen Golovin Bay. As soon as he and the dog stepped onto the bay, the wind increased. <gasps> Could it be a pressure plate to make the wind go whew? Maybe it is a pressure plate to make the wind blow. Now, let me see where we were. As soon as he and the dog stepped onto the bay, the wind increased, blowing away the snow and leaving only hard, slick ice. They made it into Golovin on the schedule, but it was anyone's guess as to whether Togo led them or the wind blew them into the village that night. <laughs> She
fake news report. When when they got to Gullivan, the news was bad. <laughs> Things are getting worse in Nome. They've radioed to say that if the relay takes two weeks, the serum will arrive too late. His host told the musher. Zipala did not get much sleep that night. January the 30th, 1925. Zipala set out early the next day and drove the team hard to cover the 53 miles to Isaac's Point. Maybe too hard. How are the dogs? A man asked him. Holding up, the musher answered. But as he looked over the team, he seemed concerned. January 31st, 1925. Zipala woke and sat straight up. Something was wrong. He cocked his ear and listened. Quickly, he jumped out of bed and looked out the window. Oh! The wind has changed, he said aloud. Togo was waiting for him outside. Wind's coming straight in from the bay now. It'll break up the ice. Zapala quickly harnessed the team. If we're gonna make it across Norton Bay, we gotta do it now. Come on, hurry across Norton Bay. Woo! Okay, Togo, lead him out, he called. Far out in front of the sl sled, Togo read the ice. He he looked for trap I mean he looked for cracks, felt for loose water, and listened for any sound of ice breaking. The wind never let up. Zapala shifted on the sled and put his hand to his back. He could feel it in his bones. The weather was changing. A storm was coming in. Hup hup he called faster. They had to get across Norton, Norton Bay before the weather pinned them down and the ice broke up. Hour after hour they ran. Smokey was struggling. Aw, poor little Smokey the dog. The team needed a rest. The Togo's ears went up. He shifted his gait and looked off to the side. There, just ahead, was another team, fighting among themselves. Ah, uh, they're fighting. Ah, uh, they're, they're all like, no, we go this way. No, we go that way. Uh, we go both ways. We split up. <laughs> Sapala called, shook, shook, run through, run through. Suddenly, words from the other team jumped off the wind. Serum, turn back. They had almost run right past the serum. The other musher ran up to Sipala. I was sent from Shark Tulik to intercept you. The epidemic gnome in Nome has gotten worse. Oh, I'm so worried. He hollered over the wind. Teams have been added so that the serum can travel both day and night. Sipala breathed a sigh of relief. <sighs> and looked at his exhausted new team. I guess you will be taking the serum on to Nome then. The man looked back at his own team. They've been fighting since we left the village. They won't make it, he said. You've got the better team. Oh, you gotta turn back and deliver the serum to the ne- Wait, okay, restart from paragraph. The man looked back at his own team. They've been fighting since we left the village. They won't make it, he said. You've got the better team. You've got to turn back and deliver the serum to the next relay man in Gullivan. Return to Gullivan. Sipala squinted back through the storm building over the bay. Gullivan was 90 miles back. Ah, oh, darn it! And now they would have to cross Norton Bay again. This time head on into the wind. Aw, oh, come on. Aw, oh, poor little puppies. Aw, oh, little dogs. Have to
to run around in the cold, cold ice again. I feel sad for him. He looked down at his own team. It desperately needed rest. All the dogs were lying down, curled up in a fluff of a ball. Except one. Togo stood pawing at the ice. Give me the serum, Zapala growled. Zapala packed the serum and moved the team out. They hugged the land as long as they could, but finally, Zapala gave the command, Togo, ha! And Togo turned left to move his team back onto the ice of Norton Bay. Aww. Immediately, the weather attacked the team. Attack, attack, attack the puppies. We are the wind. Harmony! Togo fought the wind. Ayo! Struggling to keep the sled on course. So Paula's gloved hands were knotted around the sled handle. The temperature was 40 degrees below zero. Ah! He kept thinking about the team. Too slow and the dogs would stiffen up. Too fast and just breathing hard would scorch their lungs. So Paula pulled the hood of his parka down. Togo would have to be his eyes and ears. The snow drove into the dogs' faces like millions of teeny tiny pins. They held their heads low and closed their eyes, allowing Togo to lead the way. Sapala was nodding off at the helm of the sled. Sapala bolted awake. The team was slowing down. Their stomachs were beginning to freeze where their fur was thin. Sapala stopped the team and ran to the dogs. His fingers froze inst instantly when he threw off his gloves. He, managed, he massaged each dog's stomach with his bare hands. Quickly, he got the team underway again. Oh no, they're tumbling all over each other. They're panicking. Oh, panic attack, panic attack on this puppy. Oh, it's like, ah! Inch by inch, the team worked its way across the bay. That rhymes. Suddenly, the wind kicked the sled on its side. hi -yo! The big dog, Janice, went down, a line twisted around his neck. Dogs scrambled in all directions, pulling the line taut. Zapala made a grab for the line, and a dog made a lunge for his arm, like, oh, yeah! Togo barked. The dogs backed off. Zapala loosen, loosed gems and untangled the lines. Then they were off again. Hour after hour, snow. I mean, hour after hour, it was the same. Snow, bitter cold, wind. The storm grew worse. Why can't you just make it for the poor little dogs? They just want to help some some kids by and adults by delivering medicine. Aww. Growls were heard. Tempers were wearing thin. Zipala was concerned that if they did not find a place to warm the serum soon, it might freeze. The weather dub doubled its fury. Like a night fury flying through the air. Woo! Shooting plasma blasts. Pew! 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 Okay, I've been watching too much dragon. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Zipala pushed the team harder stopping only briefly at an igloo to warm the serum. Out on the Norton Bay ice, the big dog Jens collapsed again and again and was dragged a quarter mile. He was like, oh, I'm so tired. Please drag me along the ice. Oh. Poor little dogs. So Paula, wait, the the dog called Johnson's eyes froze shut while he was blinking. He was like, ah, oh, my eyes, it's too cold, I can't open it. It's frozen. Ah, help me. Oh, oh, poor little puppies. Oh. 
to Paula cleared them using his own breath. Eh, your breath smells bad, but I know it's for my own good. Yeah, my eyes are open again. But your breath smells bad. <laughs> then Smokey refused to run any further. Even Togo could not get him to move. Come on, move. We have to do this. No! <laughs> so Paula jumped from the runners of... Wait. <gasps> wait a minute. The whole team came to a halt. No! So Paula jumped from the runners of the sled and grabbed Smokey by the collar. Get going, you! And then he felt Togo's eyes looking at him. Eyes that would not let go. They said, your team has given them all you have. Oh, this book is making me cry. Mm -hmm. So Paolo let Smokey out of the harness. He twisted the lead line around his hands and looked over at Togo. It's up to you and me. Let's bring this team in. Time, events, places all ran together. Through the cold, through the storm, through the exhaustion, Toga and Sapala led the team. Finally, finally, late in the day, the dogs picked up a scent. Gullivan Village, people. There was the other sled, the other team, the other musho. Balto! Sapala handed over the serum. Another team would continue the relighted gnome. And that team, I bet you, it was the team of Balto. He continued, woo, yay. Oh yay, a cute picture of Togo watching Balto run off with his team. Yay, now it's happy again. Woohoo! Epilogue. Togo led his team over 350 miles on his part of the serum run. He gave so much of himself that he was never able to race again. Aw, oh, poor Togo. I hope that I hope that he had a better life after that. I feel so sad for him and his team. And I feel sad that another dog got the credit because, well, I believe that all dogs who who are in the serum run should be like Yay, I'm a hero also. All of them should be heroes. They attended the serum run and ran a long way. All of them should be heroes. Well, let's continue. Another dog and another team would become famous for running only 53 miles of the serum run. That's still a long way, but not as long as 350 miles. That team was led by a kennel mate of Togo's, a dog named Balto. Hey, I know that little dog. People honored Balto for being the lead dog of the team that finally brought the serum into Nome. And certainly, every dog that participated in the serum run is a hero. But to this day, many people in Alaska have concerns about Togo's part in the run being ignored. They feel, as others have, that the hero is not always the dog who crosses the finish line first, but as in this case, the dog who made the last lap even possible. For many, the annual Iditarod race commemorates the historic serum run of 1925, the race traveling through the Shaktulik. Gullivan and many of the same villages as Leonard, Tapala, and the other mushers did on their heroic mission. The author dedicated this book to Christian. It's the journey. The end. Oh, wasn't this a sweet and amazing book? It definitely was. And I even cried, and I'm even a tough dragon. Yep, it's sad, but, well, you do know that Noma saved, and we can thank all of the dogs in the serum run, especially Togo. Awesome dog sledding for everyone. Arr! Hey, can I howl? I think I 
chicken, Hal. Oh!